Okay, this screencast is about cell energy and, and how our cells get energy and how they use energy and how energy is transformed. So uh, look at these two pictures. There's a, a kid on an alpine slide. You have to have mountains for these. So uh, this is up in Pennsylvania. I did this last summer with my kids. Um, but you go from the top of the mountain down this little cart and you fly down and you hold onto this brake and when you go too fast you pull up on the brake and it keeps from flying out of control uh, and you whiz down the mountain on a little path. Um, and then over here there's a, a dam and we have water above the dam and water below the dam. Uh, when we look at those, uh, think about different types of energy uh, and how energy is being transformed. So two types of energy that you have probably heard about are kinetic and potential energy. So what's an example of kinetic energy? Well, that's the kid flying down the cart, right? That's energy of movement or the energy flying through the dam, powering turbines to generate electricity, right? Uh, where's potential energy in these uh, diagrams, in these pictures? Um, well, it's when the kid's at the top of the hill. He's got positional energy. He's up high and gravity will pull him down and convert that potential energy into kinetic energy. Or in the dam, it's the water that's up high in the mountains and we can hold it up there and then use that stored energy to create kinetic energy which we then power turbines to make electricity. So in our bodies we're doing a lot of this chemical conversion too. We're converting potential energy into kinetic energy, energy of work and motion. So let's look at how that occurs. Let's look at another form of energy, another form of potential energy. So if we look at this diagram, there's two types of energy here, right? There's kinetic energy, that's obvious, that's the car moving. Uh, but there's also potential energy. Where's potential energy? And you're saying, oh, it's, it's in this guy's gut, right? It's, it's his fat in his belly. Well, well, that is a form of potential energy. That's chemical energy, and the fat molecules in there are chemical energy, which is, again, potential energy. But in, in the car uh, theme here, we're talking about the gas that's going in, right? Gas molecules have a lot of energy in the bonds between the, the carbons and hydrogens. Gas is a hydrocarbon, and there's a lot of energy in those bonds. We call that type of energy chemical energy. So this is an example of an energy transformation. When you drive your car, you're converting chemical energy into kinetic energy. And that's basically what our bodies do. Our bodies take food chemical energy and convert that into kinetic energy, energy of work and motion and everything. Okay, so again, we have kinetic energy and potential energy. Sliding down the slide is kinetic. Up at the top of the slide is potential energy. Well, in living systems and living things, that potential energy is in the form of organic molecules like sugar, glucose, or fat, triglyceride molecules. They have a lot of energy, again, in the bonds, in those covalent bonds. And when we break those bonds to produce these low energy molecules, that releases energy. That allows our bodies to transform that potential energy into kinetic energy of motion and pumping things in and out and of muscles contracting and all the things we need to do. Okay, so again, in terms of energy flow in systems and living systems, what's the ultimate source of all energy within all ecosystems? Uh, well, that's the sun, right? So light energy and in a process called photosynthesis, plants capture that light energy, uh, which is again another form of energy, and they convert it into a type of chemical energy. So they convert it into organic molecules, so sugars and carbohydrates and fats and proteins. Those are the organic molecules that are stored in plants and that we eat and get the chemical energy from in order to meet our energy needs. Well, what does our body do when we take that energy? Well, we convert it to the energy currency that our cells use. Our cells don't directly use food energy. They use this molecule called ATP. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. Okay, what happens to the waste products when we break all these bonds between these organic molecules? And we also use oxygen to burn these organic molecules. We produce low energy waste products. What are the low energy waste products that I am exhaling right now? Well, carbon dioxide and water. So basically an oxidized form of carbon and an oxidized form of hydrogen. And those don't have a lot of energy in them. We've extracted all that potential energy out of them 
to do the kinetic energy, to do cellular work, okay? And ultimately what happens to all that energy as I'm running around and my muscles are moving and my blood is pumping and my neurons are firing, where's all that energy end up? Well, it ultimately ends up getting converted into heat. So as I'm busy running around, my body's generating heat and I'm releasing that heat back to the environment. So in terms of energy flow in living systems, energy comes from the sun, goes through living systems from organic molecules back into the environment and ultimately is converted back into heat energy. Okay, um, So this is the molecule ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. That's a big fancy word. You'll never need to know how to spell it or even pronounce it. We'll just call it ATP. But why is it called ATP? Um, well we have uh, a phosphate group right there. There's one phosphate group. It's attached to another phosphate group right there. That's attached to a third phosphate group right there. So that's where we get the triphosphate. Okay. These guys are all, all these oxygens are very negatively charged. And do negatively charged things like being packed around other negatively charged things? No, they don't. So there's a lot of energy. We've like forced them together and they want to kind of break off and get away from those other negative charges. So there's a lot of stored energy in those three phosphates. This group over here, this is just called an adenosine group. So we have our A and then our one, two, three triphosphates. So adenosine triphosphate is just the energy stored molecule. Now we don't break this down the way we break down glucose or fat into carbon dioxide and water. This is like a rechargeable battery. This is like your laptop your cell phone, when it runs out of energy, you don't just sort of burn it and, and throw it away. You recharge it. You recharge the ener energy in that battery, right? So this is sort of a rechargeable type of energy. And uh, it's also the energy that is going to power all, directly power all of our cell activities, okay? So how is this uh, ATP used and how is it recycled? Well, first off, how do we charge it up and make this high energy molecule? Well, we make it from by attaching a phosphate to a adenosine diphosphate. That's basically two phosphates, and they don't want that third phosphate on. So it's kind of like a spring. We've got to sort of use some energy and force that third phosphate on there. Uh, but when we do, we have stored energy. We have like a charged battery. Now the energy to do that comes from food. So are, we take in energy and we burn it and we use that food energy to make this high energy molecule ATP. And then what happens to that energy? Well, just like, again, the battery in your, your cell phone or your laptop or your calculator, it's used to do stuff. It's going to be basically powering all cell processes. So everything that's going on in all of your cells, from your heart beats to your nerves firing to um, you know, proteins pumping things in and out of your cells, all that is powered by this molecule ATP. And where is ATP made? Okay, so let's go back to our cell diagram. Do you recognize these structures in here? They're sort of kidney shaped. They have this inner fold. Um, it's called the mitochondria, right? So hopefully you remember that. We called it the powerhouse of the cell because it powers all cell activities. What does that mean? It means it takes food, it takes an energy source, it burns that food, and it makes the energy currency ATP, the energy that's used basically within all cells and all cell processes. So this is just a quick review of energy and energy transformations. In the next screencast, we'll talk about the steps involved in cell respiration and how it actually makes ATP from food.